Yeah. Check. Gucci? Man, these table clamps are everything. Yeah, yeah. Can't you let me borrow these? <laughs> Forever? Forever. <laughs> Indefinitely? Until I get the... Chech is good, dude. I love that guy. He's a great dude. One time we pulled a prank on him. On Chech? Uh, Hack TV. On ha- oh, okay. We pretended we were burying a body in a backyard. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and the guy what? we hired from Home Depot was really our friend, and we had him like freak out on Chech. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> it was great. How did he react to that? <laughs> Honestly, like a stoner, he was just like... <laughs> <laughs> and he kept filming, which I loved. Like he didn't stop filming the whole time. Well, you had him film it, and he then... was filming. Yeah, he oh was there filming, and gosh. we pulled the prank on him. Oh my gosh, bro! Yeah. Are you still doing that? Uh, what is it called? We again? took a break during the pandemic because, like, dude, how many pranks can you do on people during the pandemic? I don't know, bro. But I, honestly, <laughs> it was like the most valuable shit. I would, I would cry yeah. laughing at that. I felt like I was a pranks. slave because my friend thought of the idea, and I was uh, the only person he knew who knew how to use a camera <laughs> and who would do it with you. I mean, like, I was pretty ballsy. He was just crazy, bro. bro. Like, he was going into the hospitals dressed as a doctor, covered in blood, <laughs> fake blood. Drinking beers, <laughs> like, we were pretty nuts. <laughs> we that sounds no, so illegal. <laughs> and he'd have to convince me to do it every time. I was like, oh, "No, I'm not doing gosh. this. No, I'm not doing this." Cut to me doing it. Like, are you serious? Yeah. Wait, did you ever have like fear doing that though? Hundred percent. But that you was did? that was like the thrill. It was like this adrenaline <sighs> rush after. You always strike me like you don't care about it. And then when you watch the footage back and you're like, "Fuck, let's do it again. <laughs> I can do it better." <laughs> That's when you get sucked into the wormhole oh, the vibe, of the, doing shitty things to people in public. The prank vibes. Well, you guys had good pranks. Like a lot of these channels try to do pranks. Dude, we made a lot of, of people. Lame. We made a lot of people cry. That never cry, made like, camera. Cry, yeah. laugh. No, like cry really? because they we put them in the most uncomfortable situations of their life. Oh my gosh, bro! At CVS, <laughs> at like eight p.m. <laughs> Wait, how would you make them cry though? At CVS? Like, what was the prank? Give me the the preface of the prank. Basically, uh, I had crutches, right? I had crutches and, like, a fake broken leg. Okay. And my (laughs) friend came up and, like, just pantsed me. Oh, you know to my ankles I I I and like he so. dipped out so i blame the person behind me and i fall over <laughs> with my crutches and like, i can't get up and we're blaming like this old lady not old we wouldn't target people we were oh just oh my god this lady just started crying on she, the spot whoa yeah. and i was like yo this isn't fun anymore <laughs> i don't want to do this so he would take like all the fun out of it at that moment yeah i was she like i need crying. to i need to go back to making music again <laughs> oh my gosh bro was it like a good escape though from music it was you like know? i think that's pretty important uh because i've had such a long fucking journey with mm-hmm. music that having these random escapes with the pranks or even right now like i'm learning how to grow indoor weed like yeah. that is something that's taken over as a passion as well and it's a mm-hmm. healthy thing to have aside from thinking about uh you know core progressions hooks mm-hmm. what's catchy what's yeah. hot what's not who who needs a beat uh what kind of beat are we making today yeah. or who's coming to the studio it's like 24 yeah. 7 sometimes you get bogged down and there was a point in time I was listening to music and nothing was hot. Damn. Like nothing would move me. Yeah. And that's when I had to take like a take a little step away. That's only happened to you one time before? That's happened a couple times. A couple times. times? Yeah. yeah, when you just going too hard. Yeah. Burn and, out. <clears throat> you know, you you get put in these positions that people wish for, right? And then you you're there and you're executing. Like when you had met me and I was working at the record label mm. and managing the studio, I was doing sessions till like four in the morning every Damn. day and then waking up at 7 a.m. to do mm. meetings, yeah. you know, and be an A&R and try to be professional and maintain this creative uh, flow with everybody I'm coming in touch with. Damn. And you can't put a time on music. So if we're going till four, we're going till four. Yeah. Like, yeah. But that's probably why I have all these gray hairs coming in my beard now <laughs> like literally i'm i'm getting so old it's ridiculous has it been stressful for you doing all that like looking back is it a lot of stress for you a hundred percent um 
I feel like people think I make, or we, people who do do it. Yeah. I think the people who idol them think it's a lot easier than it is. Wait, wait, like, you're speaking about people who, who view musicians as like... Yeah, or people in just, LA, you know, like people who are yeah. trying to strive for a music career and then they, they get somewhere with it where they can make some revenue. Mm -hmm. I feel like the people who idolize that don't understand how hard it is to even get that first dollar. 100%. Like I was out here, I've been out here for 13 years in LA Jeez, and bro. it took me, it yeah. took me like five or six years to make a royalty. <sighs> and then, you know, Damn. um, what year was that? It was 13 years ago. I'm just, I suck at math. 2019. Sorry. I came out here. I was 19 years old. Wait, what? 2019? 2019. 2019. No, no, you said 13 years ago. Yeah, I'm 32. But that wasn't 2019. Two, oh, my bad, 2009. <laughs> You're trash <laughs> and mad at me, fool. 2009, 2009. Yeah, I just graduated high school. I did one year of college, Bro. and I got kicked out of college. Never told my parents. Oh, my Didn't even gosh. tell them. And uh, I could still go to class at college, but I wasn't allowed on campus or to sleep in my room or Why? use like any of the facilities. What? And uh, yeah, so I finished off the year like sleeping in my car. Didn't Damn, tell my parents. Bro. Whoa. And then finessed my way to LA after freshman year of college. I was like, fuck college. Where'd you go to college at though? It was this school in Western Massachusetts. Western Massachusetts. Yeah, that place is bogged with colleges. Really? Yeah. And uh, it was called Anna Maria. A pretty small school. Mm -hmm. But uh, at the time, I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. You know, I was like forced into the system. Like, you got to go to school. You got to go to school. You got to pick something. Yeah. And it's like, what? Dude, I can't even pick shoes. Like, <laughs> And I... I picked fire science, such a random fire science. Yeah. Because I wanted to be a firefighter. Oh damn. And so the only way you could move up the ranks, you know, and at that time, my dad was a huge military head in Greece. So he did not want me oh. to join the military in America. So he was like, no, you go to school, Petros, you go to school. I'm like, all right, dude. like <laughs> I want to be a firefighter. How am I going to rank up? You know, if I don't yeah. get some military background, Damn. And so fire science was like the cheat code. If you had like if you, a degree. If you're not military background, yeah, you do you fire have, science. Yeah, if you have a degree oh. in fire science, you can work your way up to like, uh, you know, higher in the ranks. But it was tight. It was cool. It was something uh, different. You know, like the first couple of weeks I got to school, these seniors like pulled me into a room. Mm -hmm. And it was like a drunk, thirsty Thursday night. And they're like, they're like, they're like, Pete. They called me Pete instead of Petros. They're like, Pete, you're fucking nuts. I'm like, yeah. I thought they were going <laughs> to jump me, honestly. Like, I didn't know what oh, was damn. going on. And they're like, yeah, like, you're crazy. And I was like, okay, yeah. What? And they're like, you're crazy enough to like go in a burning building and pull us out. And I was like, yeah, for sure. He's like, well, we just joined a force over at OKM Fire Department. Mm -hmm. This is like 15 minutes from my school. Okay. And they wanted a bunch of youngsters in training. Mm. So they're like, we want you to start coming with us. They're trying to recruit you. They did. They recruited the, me the as a freshman. Trick. <laughs> and then like every Wednesday and Thursday, Whoa. we would go to the department and do like a simulated fire rescues. And then throughout the week, I was on call 24-7. So like if we what? got a call in the middle of a test during yeah. school, we would just leave. Like just go? four people in one classroom would just get up and go. And leave, and the most of the teachers were firefighters, so like oh, they, they understood, understood. <laughs> they knew. They're like, all right, call. good, go, go ahead, know? bro. <laughs> and it was kind of trippy because the, the first time in my life, like cops would be like there at the scene, like uh -uh. on your team rather than arresting me. <laughs> on the other side, they, <laughs> you know, they were like, playing always, for you. <laughs> I've always been on the other side, like in the cuffs. <laughs> it was just trippy to like ride in the fucking uh, fire department, uh, like fire uh, truck. Pulling up with the and, gang. Like, and like the cops are rolling up with <laughs> me like, we got this. They're gang with you? <laughs> yeah, it was trippy. Damn. Yeah, it was. Did you ever go to like crazy calls where you saw like we did a couple Crazy. brush fires, which like somebody mm -hmm. lit their backyard on fire. <laughs> Me, probably yeah. in the desert. And it was tight. Like we were out there and I was using the hose. And I was like chipping away at this brush that could have very well gotten out of control. Damn. We did some uh, snow rescues. Like what? we had to cut, uh, like take a chainsaw and like cut the ice out of the fucking. Like for a person? The ice, yeah. Like somebody was On stuck? a lake, yeah. 
in the lake yes somebody was stuck in the water Dude, in the lake bad, yeah. under the ice yeah oh my gosh yeah and they call you <laughs> out there to chainsaw the ice no, up no it was not good yeah oh my gosh bro no i didn't wait is it bad like somebody died yeah somebody died. oh i'm sorry now you make me feel terrible <laughs> jeez thanks petros <laughs> but you Jeez. know it was uh it was a tight uh, and you know what if i ever retire from music mm-hmm. i feel like i just volunteer as a firefighter in my local town really and just be that dude that. who rolls up like on his harley to every call <laughs> if straight from doing a home improvement project the long hair but it's just gray now i don't know if i'm gonna keep the long hair no? forever it probably gets annoying for sure. Yeah, it's gotta I be mean, annoying. I just pulled out like fucking. Yeah, you give me a hair ball pounds of, your hair, of you hair. Told me to keep it. <laughs> everyone did. <laughs> everyone literally <laughs> just, just pulled out like a literal hair ball of his hair and gave it to me and insisted that I keep it. You don't have a diary? You could be like, I interviewed Petros today and taped the hair to the top. Did you ever have a diary? No. <laughs> but my mom did, and me and my sister totally invaded all of that. <laughs> You read your mom's diary, bro? I mean, my sister was more into it than oh, I was, no. but, like, yeah, I for sure did. <laughs> and my mom's first boyfriend was Peter, so, like, I'm like, whoa, wait a minute, you kept, mom. You kept seeing How'd Peter? How'd you finesse that? <laughs> Dad doesn't even know. I'm named after this guy. Oh, fancy. <laughs> <laughs> kind of trippy. Oh, bro. So, and it, the weird thing is my sister named her son after her first boyfriend, too. So it's like... Following kind of, the same kind of pattern, yeah. I'm same not thing. Gonna, yeah, I'm not going to do the same. Yeah, thing. You, you don't have to disclose. I don't. His name. I don't have a first boyfriend. <laughs> that you'll, they'll name your son after. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, you, you grew up in um in Boston. Mm-hmm. You grew up in Boston. Well, well, when I'm in Bostonian, I when know. I'm out of the state in LA, I'll say Boston. But Boston is like an inner city. I grew up mm. outside the city in a beach town called Hull, Hull? Uh, which is known for the beach called Nantasket. And uh, like four months out the year, that place is popping because ah. it's summer, it's summer vibes. It's like yeah. a seven mile beach it's lit. on one side. On the other side, it's a bay. Damn. So where I live, like I could walk a football field down to the beach from mm-hmm. my house. Or if I feel like going the other way to the bay and jumping <laughs> off the pier, that's it's like hard. literally a football field away the other way. Hell yeah. That and that's kind of like how I grew up. So when you think Boston, I'm not like in the city. I you grew, grew up, up on the beach. Yeah, I grew up on the beach. That makes sense now. I'm a beach boy. I feel like I've known you and known no, nothing about you until very, literally right now. I know. This we, how many years have we known each other, dude? <laughs> like fucking six, five now? Five, no. Four, it's been that long? Four at least. You produced my favorite song that I've ever made. I'm so glad. Isn't that so crazy? I love that because <laughs> that's like so that's all I want to hear as a writer or producer. Like yeah. some people know me as an artist, but my favorite thing to do is write or produce somebody's favorite song. Damn. Have you heard this before? Yeah. Really? Yeah. That is nuts. I didn't want to take away the special. No, no, that's, I feel you. But that's what I that's yeah. my thing. That's what I'm supposed to do. Yeah, for sure. And even if I do a lot or I do a little, I'm a part of it. Yeah. For sure. It's always different. You know, like you can never go in the studio and be like, all right, I'm about to do everything. Sometimes I go in there and I don't mm. even say a fucking thing until it's like third quarter and they're like, I'm stuck. And then I stand up and I'm like, yeah, boom, here's your breakthrough. Yeah. You do hustle in the studio. Like you, you know how to make a record at this point well enough to where, like you said, you can stand up and be coach for somebody. You can coach it in the right way, you know? It's hard think, earlier on. Like for me, I didn't really know how to structure a song that well, but you have, you just have a lot of like skin in the game, bro, of how to do it, how to do it well, how to write a good song, you know? I mean, dude, I've seen so many goats in the studio. Yeah. I've been like the wallflower in so many sessions and seen what people do. Yeah. Um, but now after 13 years of being out here in LA, I feel like I can walk into any studio and it's treat it like it's my home court. You know, you always do that since I've known you. <coughs> Every room yeah. that that you're in, you have like a big pool. Pause. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But did you learn that how to do that, or because I feel like naturally in your your character, you just you're a big character, so you have a lot of confidence. People gravitate towards you. You know what I mean? Or is that a learned skill? I don't know. I feel like. Um 
it comes with my character for sure because I am allowed extra like when I come in the room even if there's no music equipment like I'm there to make you smile laugh mm-hmm. I might be loud and say some out of pocket shit yeah and it might offend you at first so you have to turn to somebody who knows me and they'll yep. literally be like nah trust me he's just weird like that let, <laughs> let it pass and I feel like I take that same energy to the to, to the studio like whether or not it's our first session or not like mm-hmm. um I'm going to make sure you know, A, you're comfortable, though, but B, like, we're getting this done. Yeah. And sometimes it could be intimidating. Like, it could backfire on me. It's really? a lot of times where I'm loud and I'm wrong. Ah. You know? Yeah. Like, you'll feel somebody, like, pull back from that? Or, like, I don't have the best idea for the moment. You Got know? It. It's like... Got it. And in my process in the studio, it's like, okay, you did something. We either beat it or keep it. Mm-hmm. And so everybody's shouting what we can do to beat it. If there's a moment in a song where you're like, <clears throat> yeah, it's so like this part's not sitting right with me. Right. Can you beat it or do we keep it? And like, I'm always trying to beat it. What do you mean beat it? Like you can I do can, better? Yeah. Like uh-huh. if we can find a better word, better melody, better complexion of voice, mm. um, <clears throat> yeah. anything, you know, dropping the beat out something. Yeah. Because music is has always been a feeling to me, and uh, you know, my dad always told me I'd be a great lawyer. Well, when I'm in the studio, I feel like I'm lawyering. I'm always like, <laughs> "We need this," you know what I mean? Like, because of this, you're gonna get stuck like this if you don't do this. Yeah. I don't know. It's just yeah. like a whole bunch of politicking. Yeah, it is. Um, you're right. And I never wanted to be a lawyer. Never wanted to be a doctor. Sorry, Dad. He fucking. He wanted hate. you to be both. Dude, he thought Damn. he hated that I You're a chose this career for really? sure. Yeah, it was a huge battle with family to come out here by myself and just Man. wing it. Yeah, you know, because nobody did that. How's no that one, even where I was from, did music seriously. It was a small, smaller. It was town. a small yeah. area. Yeah, so nobody yeah. really. Everybody went to school for four years. Now they're pretty mm. much working in the union. <laughs> Damn, <laughs> married kids, all that. Yeah, about that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I took the road less traveled. Yeah. It's an interesting choice. Why? After I got kicked out of college and I like did it without telling anybody, Mm -hmm. like without revealing that I was like a failure to my family, I think it gave me so much grit Mm. um, that I, I had talked my way back into school. Um, what do you mean? Talk to so I had a meeting with the president of the school after months of being oh, homeless. Okay. And I looked him in the eyes. The president of the school, I was like, look, I understand what I did wrong. Like, he caught me with weed. The security caught me with weed. Oh. And I got banished from campus. And I held a meeting to appeal his suspension for the full year. Mm-hmm. And I, I sat at the table with him. And I was like, look, I will serve the rest of my year with dignity. I'm not telling my parents. I told him. You know, like, I'm going to sleep in my car. I told him that until, you know, I finish getting these straight A's. And I told him this. I was like, but if you can honestly look me in the eyes and tell me you never experimented with marijuana when you went to college, I'll serve the rest of the year with a fucking smile on my face. And then I walked out, you know, like, end of the (laughs) meeting. And he sent me an email, like, a couple hours later and told me I could come back. That is crazy. So once bro. I finessed that you without telling my table. yeah, without telling yeah. my parents, you know, at a time like that, you depend on your parents for a lot of things, oh, like sure. advice, yeah, with direction or arguments with it's anybody above thirty. You're definitely talking to your parents <laughs> about it. <laughs> and so yeah. I did it by myself, and I was like, you know what, dude, I could probably finesse my way out to this that music way. shit because yeah. when I came back to school. Uh, I was making bangers in my dorm room Mm -hmm. and I saw the attention that I was getting. And then all of a sudden we were all going to the clubs and I'm giving the CD. That's how long ago it was. I was giving the CD to the DJ and he was playing the bangers on in the club and like everyone from school is hearing it. And it was such a crazy buzz that I was like, if I don't give this a shot now, Mm -hmm. Like, who am I? Like, dude, I could be 50 in a firefighter. I was like Damn. working with a bunch of 50 year olds on Wednesday and Thursday doing right. fake attic rescues in the attic <laughs> with baby dolls. And these 50 year olds, like, so out of shape. I was like, dude, I could come back to this career yeah. if I really want to. It's going to be there. But the music thing was like, yeah, just the attention, the gravity of emotions that you can 
that you can orchestrate um, in large groups of people. It just mm-hmm. took over me. So it was exciting at that time. I feel you. That yeah. time is exciting, bro. And first, around that time, mm-hmm. somebody flew me out to Atlanta. Oh, we got to flew work. Out? Yeah, mm-hmm. to work. Yeah, somebody <laughs> flew me out to Atlanta, and that was like my first big. Yeah. Big deal. I was like, oh, I'm, I got a flight book for me. I got right. a place to stay and a free studio for the week. Yep. And producers are just going to go in on me. Elevates you in a different status in yeah. your, in your you mind know. at that point. Yeah. I'll never forget getting off the plane and this motherfucker had to put his gun away. He's like, oh, we don't need this. <laughs> <I was> just, <laughs> just like some scrawny white boy getting off the plane. I was like, That's yeah, so dog. I was like, what do you think this was? <laughs> Yeah. We don't need this, but he flew you out. And he flew me out, oh, you know. My uh, gosh. And I finessed that That's too crazy. because we were we were designing covers for him for like two years. I was like sixteen mm. to eighteen. Damn. Uh, we were doing his mixtape covers because you know how DJs back in the day we were doing mixtape torrents, so they were torrenting mixtapes every week of the newest songs. Huh. That was the thing back then. That's how Lil Wayne was able to, in and Drake was able to make you know a huge following before dropping an album so this was, was straight out the ish era 2008 Eight, 2009. 2009 wow and so because yeah. we did so many covers for them and they heard our music they liked it me and my boys they like they flew me out damn bro and then i thought i was the shit <laughs> <laughs> that after that feeling you were just like yeah yeah you go up a little bit and then yep. you know shortly after that i told my parents i wasn't going back to college I was like, fuck that. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to go to LA. I'm going to give this music thing a shot. Damn. And How was that combo with them? Horrible. Damn. My dad didn't think it, like yeah. it was like a thing. And then the first time ever, they sat in my room and they were like, okay, play us something. Whoa. And I was like, because they never really knew. <laughs> they didn't know. Yeah, they didn't know. Listen to your music, none of that. Yeah. How I was mean, that, that when you played the them cops song? knew before they did. <laughs> I swear to God, I was selling mixtapes oh, out man. the front of my house and I had cars lined Seriously? up. Like, swear to God, you cars lined up oh. on days that the we would drop a mixtape. There would be multiple people and the cops pulled up and they're like, a lot of traffic here, Horderitas. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah. I was like, boom. I like busted out a mixtape and I'm like just straight talking about weed and drugs oh, on the mixtape. And like, Eight, 17, 18 years old, I gave it to the cops. Yeah. And they respected it. They were like, okay. Yeah, it's hustling. Yeah. For real. Like, That's crazy, um, man. Yeah, so my parents, been- they sat down and they listened to a song for the first time ever. How was that? And the song made them both cry. Oh. Like, my dad and my mom. I never really saw my dad cry. Man. That's crazy, bro. That's so a then they like, all right, go. Try it. Wow. I wish I had like a storybook moment like that. That's just, that's honestly crazy. amazing, bro. So my dad is like this yeah. military tough I feel Greek you. man who like yeah. does not yeah. show emotion. any sort of emotion. Yeah. So like the fact that he had the patience to listen to something that I had to play. Right. And then it affected him like that. That was like a huge pull because I wasn't just influencing my friends. Right. Like here's now your, I influence that fucking man who, Valuable. who I'm scared of. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I mean, I have a similar situation with uh, with my dad in particular too, where, where like he doesn't really care about like art or music or anything like that. You know, he's an engineer. So his brain has always been like very black and white about things. But it's crazy you say that because I don't even, I don't think my dad has heard my music. I can't say that I, my dad has... I can't tell you with confidence that my dad has heard one of my songs. I don't know. I think he should. Hoops goes crazy, dude. <laughs> if Yo, he dad. heard hoops. Yo, dad, peep this. <laughs> yeah, but that's a big moment, bro. <laughs> It'll Damn. happen. It'll happen when it's right. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, like you can't ask him. I don't feel like you can no, be he's like, gotta hey, hear it. you want to hear this song? It's like no, nobody <laughs> likes listening to a song that you ask them to hear. I don't know why. Yeah, no, I don't think I've ever like... Ran, ran play that some fool is like yo run this song <laughs> yeah dude i never ran thank god it. the aux cord got more difficult as the iphone increased oh because like gosh. too many people had the aux oh bad and bad aux people you know bad. i was one of those people you were a bad aux person because i would always play something that nobody knew and everybody oh, wanted gosh. to hear from the window oh, and i'd be playing like yeah papoose <laughs> just or something like, mad different i don't know like something so uh, like underground but like dope you know what i mean yeah, yeah. i think i thrived on finding the best music that nobody 
new. Yeah. And that comes down to a huge category of listeners that we have nowadays. It's like, what kind of listener are you? Are you the person that listens to what's force fed to you? Mm. Do you go straight to the biggest playlist and just listen to what's new? Right. Or do you go and find somebody who has under 5,000 followers, but a fucking banger, like mm. a banger that you can listen to over and over and over again. Right multiple days in a row yeah and um <clears throat> that's the difference between water and tea you know a lot yeah. of how do you get somebody who loves drinking water to enjoy tea yeah it's you know? hard to find that because tea is like yeah. a fine type of thing like what do you associate tea with it's right. like fine divine and mm -hmm. maybe like a more, little more, more valuable. socially valuable mm -hmm. whereas everybody loves water everyone can drink water Bro, i can't I, I suck at drinking water and i don't enjoy it I have to drink like seltzers, like, you know what I mean? Sparkling water. So like making that relate with music, like how do you get people to like exclusive, fine, divine seltzers, seltzers and <laughs> tea? Well, cause if they're so used to water, why the hell would they yeah. drink your tea? Yeah. You know, you have to maybe mm -hmm. pour a little tea in their water every now and then. That's always been my philosophy around making music. Even since I started, I always wanted to, to make something that was undeniably different but valuable but it's always want, i didn't want to to lay into like the generational music that we just hear because of the times that we're in although i think artists kind of just like fall into that trap naturally like you know what i noticed over time in my writing i would i would write lies and sing just like stuff that i thought people wanted to hear for a long time you know which I guess is a lot of artists. I miss rapping about Dude. my gat <laughs> and my fire bars. You pull up and that fool said, oh, we don't need this trap. <laughs> <laughs> no, I feel you. There's a huge breaking you know? moment when you realize you yeah. just wrote something that that is true to you and you sang it the best. And then you see yeah. people respond to it right. more than they respond to your songs about ass shaking <laughs> and like drive-bys yeah. or whatever like and it's a moment in your life where you realize like i don't have to be like the person i listen to you i can mm -hmm. be me i can say my feelings and people truly respond yeah to a true story 100 percent. i think yeah. that's that's the best response that i've had historically is when when i knew for certain that every lyric every intention everything that i put into it was honest was really honest because for artists like and you know this i'm sure you've experienced this it's like when you write something that's really important to you or honest it's very difficult to want to give it away to the world to reveal it like there's a lot of insecurity that goes into like showing your music which is a weird uh it's like an ironic thing with musicians because like I think deep down we all want to be seen and heard our, our music we want it to be validated but then we also at the same time don't want anybody to judge our you know like very intimate parts of our music basically because it's, it's very personal when you start yeah. writing like that you know yeah and that's the struggle about being an artist is like you're so oh man dude <laughs> <laughs> you're so you're so vulnerable all the time you know yeah and uh you can either use it as a power it could be powerful or it could actually shrink you if you don't know how to channel that vulnerability yeah with confidence yeah um and i must tell you like some of my songs that i cried the most to after finishing the verse mm -hmm. and listening back mm -hmm. and i'm telling you like tears will come down my eyes whether anybody's in the studio or i'm by myself it just happens right. like can't help it those are the songs that have some of my most plays you know yeah. Yeah. and most <clears throat> effect on people 100%. nothing feels better than when you do something like that vulnerable mm -hmm. and then you put it out and somebody responds the way you, you want them to like you could yeah. save somebody 100 percent um has, that ha has somebody reached out to you and told you that tons of times that's tons amazing. of times people yeah. have said like petros you have no idea like uh this song has saved me like damn from you know a killing myself b like wanting to kill my girlfriend i don't know <laughs> oh, <gee. laughs> no uh, there was one time i Gosh. told i was going through it there was one time i was going through a breakup and i i just tweeted out like my dms are open for anybody that needs advice on any personal issues mm. and it i got surprised like it got flooded with like a hundred 
or oh. more people, people were telling in. personal situations that they were going through right then and there with like a significant other, a family member, a job, lost a job, um, you know, anything like yeah. going to a new city and they're new in school and they're getting bullied. And I sat down <clears throat> and made sure <clears throat> I sat with each one and made sure that I gave them 100% of the best advice I could give. Damn. You know, because these these kids don't have much. I thank God I had music. Thank God you have music. Who knows where we would be along the path? You right. know, right? Uh, but like you know, yeah. some of these kids don't have that, and so uh, to be an open vessel, well, you know, they listen to your music all the time, and then to get advice from you mm -hmm. would be like kind of crazy. I remember when I was a kid, I used to write letters to Ken Griffey Jr. You Damn, know, like really? hoping that he would respond, respond back. Him. Yeah. I mean, he never did, but <laughs> still. Dear Petro. Still Actually, maybe he did, but I don't know if it was him. It might have been like. Dear Peter, <laughs> his assistant. <laughs> Dear Peter. Dude, no, that's crazy. So that I felt like that would have been huge for me in my my childhood or yeah. growing up <clears throat> when I needed direction. Yeah. I forget about that a lot because, like, my music has for sure impacted a lot of people i would be naive to not think that but i'm not like conscious of that all the time you know like when i was 18 actually when i was like 17 or 18 um i dropped this project it was called five west and uh i wrote it about this like horrible time that i went through where i spent at a psychiatric ward right and the ward was called five west and basically at the point in my life i went through a pretty bad breakup hadn't really been through much like hardship or anything like you know full of struggle in my life at that point in time um i also dropped out of college from the university of new mexico and it all kind of just like happened at once i think the girl cheated on me i don't know if she did or not again at that point in my time like i mean at that point in my life my mind was just like completely overwhelmed like i just fully had like a breakdown you know what i mean it was like the most that i dealt with ever so i was i had like legitimate suicidal thoughts that's what it started with first and it was a weird thing because i'd never really thought that my whole life you know but it got to a point where i was really unhealthy like mentally where i would have these thoughts of like damn it would be better off just not living not existing anymore that's how it started so i understand when people like say these things like it's a, it's a legitimate thought process it's weird now looking back at it because i've since healed myself and like i'm definitely a much healthier person than then but all that got me into a psychiatric ward for five days basically <laughs> and how i was like basically trapped in there like you know I don't know what my rights were specifically, but I couldn't get out. And I was entitled to think that the first day that I got in, that I was just going to get out like willy nilly. And uh, I had to stay for a full five. And it was just like horrible, bro. Like, like probably the hardest experience at that point in my life. I saw this lady get, uh, it was, it's like they, like they tranquilized her. Oh man. Like right in front of me. It was crazy. Um, they literally like put this big needle like in her back like and like laid her down like right in front of me she, it, it was nuts bro i had a crazy time in there i quickly realized like oh like i'm better than i think like yeah. there's people in here that are <laughs> really suffering and like they have legitimate mental issues and you know all that but um when i came out of that i wrote that album and it was like the first honest project that i wrote like that because there was so much pain in my life and i just I didn't have any other way to channel it. Music naturally, it's gonna come out. So I did that and then unexpectedly, like it blew up within like the city. Like you said, like people started listening to it. And not only that is like all the people who were feeling suicidal or had gone through those kinds of issues in their life, like it really impacted that specific demographic of people, you know? And that was interesting to me because they started to view me as like, the leader spokesperson man and i didn't really actually want that <laughs> at that point in my life but it just kind of like became that at that time 
but i'm just thinking back like that's literally where my career started bro started mm -hmm. there like it was a lot of momentum there but just from being fully open honest like transparent in that time in my life it was nuts it was hard and people reached out to me and they were like like you say my life bro like i listen to these songs and like i wanted to kill myself i didn't kill myself like it's kind of wild to hear that yeah you know? so you don't know how to take it sometimes. you don't know how to take that because first it's heavy it is it's like heavy shit sure and then you're like wow like i'm the cultivator of like saving you and then yeah. you, you don't know how to respond you gonna want to keep it chill it's weird but then you also want to ask like how you doing dude you yeah you're you know, right you like, good yeah. but you know <clears throat> with the internet these days tupac never had to deal with that dude <laughs> yo hell no all the, they didn't have to deal with some of these parts that are hard they're intricate and weird and like even bro you're you're explaining an era that i have zero idea about that's what's crazy what it's the like, mixtape era dog when you're explaining 2008 and 2009 i was like seven years old <laughs> yeah like <they're, laughs> i was like a little ass little kid. wayne manny fresh like <laughs> yeah, and uh, i don't know nothing about it straight like up. ace hood like yeah. they were just popping around that taiga was kind of popping and all the names you but know how you explain it is like whoa that's crazy everybody was kind of doing stuff out the trunk Nicki minaj did a whole mixtape out the trunk that's how they Damn. blew up because a lot of these djs would just get the record and then mm -hmm. put it on their next volume volume 83 whatever and they would just pump through these volumes and I that mean, was valuable the DJs, yeah, it was, yeah it was free music but there was value there and right. then that's when spotify came in and was like okay how do we just like continue yeah, this you know, giving free music but making money, and they figured it out. The system. The biggest finesse. Biggest. <laughs> Bro, we are getting so screwed. It's pretty Think bad. Think about that. I don't even want to get into like the no, writer share shit. I don't even it. know enough Lit. about it. I don't either, honestly. You know, to, yeah. to intellectually speak sure. on it, but I do know that. Um, How much do we get per stream? On it's like Spotify. Point zero five. Point zero zero five. I think it yeah. So it's like a fifth of a penny a fifth for every of stream. One penny for a stream. Yeah. So that would mean geez, basically like math. a million basically a million views is like five K or something. One million plays five thousand dollars. Yeah. That sounds nuts. I mean oh. if you have if you're on like ten stores and it gets a million plays on each store, you know, it's not bad. You know, there's this argument that people make that it's easier to be a musician today and like make money off of music but i mean i kind of agree with both sides because it's there's easier access to the playing field for basically everybody like the cost to entry is like essentially nothing you can technically blow up through a tiktok or through whatever means but like having a sustainable career as an artist like what does it look like today what are your income sources it's if you're I mean, going through a label, it's going to be what? Like before everyone could be their own publisher. Right. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, the only, the biggest issue I have is it leaves the listener uh, more of an odds of hearing a shitty song. <laughs> That's a great point. And so you, how many yeah. times can you do, deal with that until you lose faith? Right. And whatever service you're, or stream or playlist or whatever it is now you're going to, mm -hmm. you know, before it was just like, okay, you know, this is going to be good because Rockefeller put it out or, right. um, there's like these Atlantic or yeah, these huge gate gatekeepers mm -hmm. and you couldn't publish a song by yourself. Nowadays you can, I could go like this, a whole song <laughs> and I could put it out. I could put it out. And, and it'll be, be published tonight. to over 128 yeah. stores. <laughs> that is nuts. And yeah. I can get it updated every two years, the plan. So it yep. stays out. All right. And no one's going to take that down. Nope. It's going to exist forever, along with the rest now, of however many. Now, am I mad at that? No. Like, I want everyone to have a chance. But I said this a long time ago. I see with the future of music, what I see is that at some point in time, everybody's going to have their own song everybody's gonna have their own album maybe but everyone's gonna have their own song what do you mean everyone everyone like you go to school your principal he has a record <laughs> you go to the doctor your uh, doctor who's like giving you profession he has a record it's like a bad at dream. one time in his life he's like yeah i made a song before it's pretty dope and then like and so obviously we're gonna have that happen it's you know it's like everyone yeah. who has a facebook everyone now who is starting to get a tiktok right soon enough it'll be like yeah i tried music before yeah. everyone is gonna but it'll be the people who make it the long run and surpass mm. 
to reach everyone, you know, because you can't just reach everybody. That's the goal of music is you want to touch the world. Right. But you can't. It takes. It takes machines. It takes machines. It takes machines. Like, look, even look yeah. at the dude, Ramsey, who sang in Walmart, that little boy. Yeah, where's he now? Exactly. Nowhere. He touched the world. The abyss. Too gone. quick. <laughs> too quick. He touched the world too quick. And maybe Poor Ramsey. He's probably making a great living off I'm of sure. music. I'm, I'm sure. sure he's doing great yeah. and he's, be able, he's able to provide for his family. All right. But, like, what do you want? You want to consistently touch the world. Like, yeah. well, that's people, where, yeah. people may never have a Drake run. Yeah. And I hate to bring that up because... Yeah, most people will not. Period. Drake has been touching the world for... Yeah, 10 years. How many years? 10, 15 years. Longer than that. Jeez. You know what's crazy about this is it all boils down to, like, your, your intention of yourself. Because I had, to, I had to sit down and have this talk with myself. Because I think for a lot of artists, the the entrance always is like you want to be famous and you want to have notoriety you want everybody to know you and and probably be rich and all that and i struggled a lot for a long period of time with that like just wanting to be seen obviously wanting my music to be heard but i'm thinking like is it fame like what do you want do you want fame do you want to be rich what what exactly do you want out of this you know and this still sometimes it confuses me because I, I want I want people to know my music and experience my music. I also want to make a living for my family, you know. And I I just lean towards this answer all the time is like, okay, what if I was like somebody like a uh, what's his name Dave Ramsey, what's his name the little kid, something. Uh, uh, I don't know. Um, Mason Ramsey. Mason Ramsey. There we go. Like if I can make a living off of music and provide for my family like i feel like i would be happy with that and content with that but i don't know i don't know if that's the case you know you know what i'm saying it's like you have to have that talk with yourself and figure it out i feel like i still don't have that 100 percent figured out just yet and a lot of people don't realize fame sucks like i i'm not famous I but i've it. i've been on plenty of tours with somebody who is famous mm -hmm. and i can tell you bro you think it's all fun and games it's not like it's you, when you have people swarming your tour bus and you can't leave the tour bus for five hours so you're sitting in the five back hours yeah because they're out there waiting for your show to start and you want to just go shopping or you just want to go get food or you, you just want to go out and smoke a cigarette out of the tour bus you can't they're out there they're waiting for you and they're gonna swarm you and it's it's like cool to treat your fans but it's uncomfortable yeah. you're at the airport you get you have to take pictures oh, you just like hung over and you just want to get on the plane you got to take pictures <laughs> oh, like it's not all fun and games you yeah. know and yeah. so a lot of people think like oh i want to be famous i want to be but you know there's a whole other side that comes with it no that's a good and if point. you're not prepared for it you mm -hmm. know like um yeah, you might end up you. yeah it could ruin you and, yeah. and you could ruin a lot of people with it and then end up making a bad rep out of yourself you know right but right. nowadays things are changing it's weird it's like people made music to be famous now people are famous and then they're making music it's like so yeah, ass it's backwards. backwards it is and that's why we have such shitty music coming from these people that can reach so many people at one time that's the biggest point point. and then what so i think if the market is continuing to bubble up like this where it's just basically all supply <laughs> she's taking videos of you no but can right. i have the puff i want to hit the puff oh, you, might, you keep looking over I'm there wild i'm like dude, what's I'm happening sweating hold on yeah let me take puff. my shirt off real quick <laughs> can i have the puff no, i'm not done <laughs> oh bro <laughs> oh, do you want to pause? No, 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 no. We're All running right. live, baby. <laughs> We're running Let's it. Let me see the puff. We gave him the puff, yo. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Sarah. Uh, Thanks for the puff. I, I quit smoking cigarettes, so like... Nice. So you're, you're bugging out over here next oh, one. Dude, How long have you quit? Topics, man. How long have you quit smoking cigarettes? Uh, I don't even know. I no? think I stopped during the pandemic... I was smoking those things people call mokes, mokes? or chops. Oh, yeah. You remember? With we were weed? smoking chops all Bro, the time. Bro, remember that bong that we would smoke out of that freaking almost gave me throat cancer? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. of course. Bong, which was actually somebody named Noodles Bong. Oh, my gosh. She donated. Bro, that bong was awful. Awful. Yeah, but that thing saved. <sighs> it did. It was like the, the old faithful. That was back when I mean? we lived off Del Taco. That was Del Taco. What else? 
It's pretty uh, much it. Del Taco. There was a fish grill <sighs> down the street, too. That t- I never knew about the fish grill until yeah, I was, started seeing them. It was busting. You, know? you had the fish grill before? Yellow Hill showed me. He brought over fish <laughs> one time. I was like, wait a minute. He's so elegant. <laughs> <laughs> he pulled up with fish grill. We were eating Del Taco. <laughs> Literally. I'm like, what the hell? The funny thing about him is he always used uh, to keep his girl in the car. So we'd do like four hour sessions. And she, would be in the she, she would just be staying in the car. I'm like, dude, she can come in like and chill. <laughs> Such a uh, G, <laughs> I've been trying to lock in one with Tim, too. I'm, I'm going to get him on. No, today. he'll be great on the He's going to be fantastic. I can't wait to pick his brain. Um, bro. I feel like I haven't known like any of these things about you at all, which is why I wanted to do this because I knew we'd kind of get into this bag. Oh, there's a lot of layers to this Petro. Oh, 100 percent. It's because you're hilarious. <laughs> One, well, first off, I have this mask in my character, or at least I I think now looking back, it's like I'm funny, and I've used it to kind of like hide the other layers of me. You know what I mean? Like I'll just be funny and I can just keep people at bay with being funny. And they have no idea you're a total psycho. I'm psycho. I'm a Navy <laughs> SEAL, how I live, and I'm the deepest fool ever pause. You know, but yeah. The deepest fool. Ever. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like that's kind of like, I don't know. No, Intuitively, you're right. I feel like that's how you are. I feel like, you know, even on a bad day, yeah. I mean, I definitely wear my emotions on my sleeve. So when you don't see funny Pete, it's like... Yeah. You know something's it up. It's almost like, like dude, geez. you're just giving away all your cards here. But doesn't that suck? Because everybody kind of expects like yeah, they funny, expect funny Pete. Pete, and when like, he's let me gone, just be me, yo. I have to tell. I'd be like, yeah, dude, I'm not having a fucking good day. Yeah, it's well, weird for people. What's to going hear. on, dude? What's going on? I don't want to fucking yeah, talk, I don't talk about it. Leave me alone. But that's who we are. We shelter yeah. it. We compartmentalize and we move on. I feel like that era of kids. I don't know if that's dying off or not. It is because Let's talk about that. These kids are weak. Little these kids weenies are weak. Today. I went. I'm in a men's league basketball league. These motherfuckers got in a brawl the game before me. I'm like, dude, we're playing basketball on a Sunday morning. Like, this is God's day, dude. There's kids here. What are you doing clearing the benches at a men's league? Why are you there? First off, <laughs> I like to get recreational. <laughs> You know, basketball was the first dream before uh, music. I really? Thought, was I thought basketball? I was going to go to the NBA. I've never seen you hoop <laughs> Swear before, to God. Bro. I've never seen you hoop. <laughs> Dude, I used to be able to dunk. I dunked it before. Are you serious? Yeah. There are times where you speak to me that I don't know if you're kidding. That's no, what, like, what I love I was about on you. the basketball team at Anna Maria College as oh a freshman. Oh, my gosh. Played in the alumni game. Oh, my God. I was on the team, bro. And then I got kicked off, kicked off campus. And, Damn. like, the coach hated me. It's crazy they did over some weed. Over weed, yeah. yeah. Like they did to this girl today that I wanted to talk to you about. What? That's actually so awful. Oh, what's Brittany, her name? Brittany. It's Brittany Griner? Nine years, dude, Griner. in Russia. Nine years. Could you imagine being in prison in Russia, bro, that's for so nine? so political, though. Woo! Nine years. Yeah, that's I was bad. talking to one of my homies at, at work today, and he was telling me, like, you know, he has, like, insider knowledge on the situation. I, I don't know. Ahead, but he's me. like, basically, we would get a transfer. It's like some sort of transfer. Yeah, so they like, they want a prisoner of war or yeah, something like that. that something, we right? Putin wants some henchmen back. But that's not it. They're <laughs> not going to stop there. They're gonna so? they're gonna go hard on her until they get they they literally will make us feel dumb if we let her stay there for nine years. Damn. If we don't secure her back, we're yeah. gonna look horrible as a nation. So I feel like they're That's just gonna point. they're gonna run it up on us. They don't want just the prisoner of war. They're gonna yeah. take other things. They're gonna there'll be more things that we don't know about in they, this deal. Like they have more leverage in the oh, deal. Oh they have all sure. the leverage yeah. right now. Damn it's right. it's just like the poor girl is a scapegoat in the middle of a political yeah. endeavor so yeah and biden doesn't know what the hell's going on <laughs> right now. that man can't even stay on his bike bro remember when <laughs> <laughs> poor guy yo he <laughs> fell off the bike and they were trying to say he didn't fall off the bike yo <laughs> stop like bro can we stop can we be honest yo? Yeah, somebody get that man oh, a razor scooter gosh. they literally were reporting like nah he ain't fall off <laughs> <No>. <laughs> we saw it literally like on video him fall off i'm not bike. gonna lie though i used uh, one of those bikes with the like little foot pedal thing in it like and, the and i did one. the same thing before. you fell off i <laughs> fell off with the little because my foot got caught and i went to go step to the side and it just didn't do what i wanted it to so like when i saw that i was like oh i could see that happening 
Yeah. But like, you know, you're the president, dog. Yeah. Like Obama was playing basketball. Well, Obama you know? was such a G. Bill Clinton was playing the sax Bill on Clinton SNL. Was also a G. This fool's not a G. Let's keep it a bean. He's <laughs> an old, bean. old fart. He's an old, he's an old man. Like, <laughs> what, what does he, he do that's cool? I just want to find the cool thing that he does. Literally not one thing um, is cool. I mean, he's one rad dad. If he's paying for his son's hookers, <laughs> he's a cool dad. I don't think he has anything to do with it. <laughs> my dad wouldn't even no pay way. for my fucking uh, court fees. Yeah, not even that. Like my, my lunch for today. <laughs> Literally. Nothing. I don't think my dad's ever given me 20 bucks. <laughs> I swear. <laughs> And I've worked so hard for him. That's and my dad had me in the backyard, like, <laughs> since four or five, just, like, turning dirt just and just, crazy. like, uh, churning soil and shit. Bro, your dad sounds like a savage. He was sounds a like savage. a hard, hard man. Pause. There was one time we were uh, we were paving the, the driveway, uh -huh. and it was all gravel. He said, like, Petros, we're going to put a basketball hoop here for you. That's how he talks. But, yeah, he, he's <laughs> like, but first, you must move all this gravel. To the grass because oh, the cement no. companies come tomorrow. I was like, Dad, are you sure we really have to do that? They can't just cement over the gravel. He's like, What are you stupid? I was like, All right. So I spent four hours with a fucking shovel taking all the gravel out of the driveway onto the dirt. And I'm telling you, dude, it was like, it was probably like 6,000 oh pounds gosh. of gravel. Oh my gosh, bro. They come the next day, the cement company. Like, why'd you move and they're like, What are you doing? Why'd you move all this gravel? We use this to keep the sediment uh, of the cement like stronger. Oh my! So gosh. me and like four, my dad made me do it when the guys were there. Me and four of the guys from the cement company put it back. Put it back, and I'll never forget grilling my dad the whole fucking time. He straight up didn't know, or he did. He on just purpose. he just didn't want to admit that he fucked up. Oh gosh, the pride, the man. Yeah, pride. he was like, oh he was my like, bad. Oh. <laughs> my bed and he fucking went in the backyard and watered his plants oh my gosh bro dads are phenomenal though yeah like, i mean i'm a, i'm happy yeah. he put put me to that kind of work because yeah. that's the reason why i've been able to stay out here for 13 years like yeah i don't give up like i right. don't care yeah six thousand pounds or fucking two million pounds i'm yeah. staying out here until i accomplish what i want to do you do have that will that's that's crazy because I feel like also that was kind of instilled in me. Was it competitive? Was he, did he teach you competition early? Yeah. Like growing up? Yeah. yeah I mean, uh, well, you're an athlete. He so. was weird about it though. Like I'd be out with my friends mm -hmm. and he'd like pull me in the house and he would like go to the window and be like, look at this. You, know, you see him do this? Why do you copy him? I'm like, what are you talking about? Dad? He, he wants to slide on the ice. Why do you slide on the ice too? I'm like, cause it Whoa. looks fun. He's like, don't be a follower. That is hard. And I was like, at the time, I was like, you're fucking annoying. Yeah, of course, you're a little boy. Like, but as I got older, that? I saw what he was trying to do. Wisdom. Bro. He just didn't want me to be a sheep. Yeah. He wanted me to, like, lead the pack. That's amazing that he did that, honestly. You know what my dad would do? What? He would just, every game he would play, he beat the shit out of me in every <laughs> game. <laughs> like, no, so bad. No remorse. No mercy. Like, starting from the time that I was a little boy. Like, imagine playing with a little child basketball, <laughs> you just and you just swat. shit on them, like, 20 to zero. <laughs> That's funny. You do it, and he would, I remember this is, like, burned in my brain after every game. And as I got older, I would get, you know, more competitive, and I would, we, I would get closer and closer, and I would lose. And after every game, he would, like, mock me, and then he would look at me and be like, you want to be the best? You got to beat the best. And he would leave. And I would be so pissed, bro. I want to run it back. I'd be like, come on, let's run it back. Let's run it back. And he would, he just wouldn't run it back. He'd go inside. Yeah, you can't. We can't wouldn't see him easy. to the next round. But damn, that was so valuable. It like stuck with me, you know? Yeah, I think we would know too. We're not dumb. If when an adult like lets us win, it's like, all right, dude, yeah, come on. Like, come on, bro, try. Because then the next time you're going <laughs> to ask him to try. Uh, yeah, for sure. And then that's not going to feel good. No. You're going <laughs> to. <laughs> yeah, we love the ass yeah. open. Pause. Yeah, yeah. Pause, yeah, yeah. My dad didn't my play kids. games with me, but he did still beat my ass and everything. Hell yeah, that's how it should be. I'm not taking it easy on. Like, do you take it easy on your girl? Uh, we don't with play, games. We don't really play games. No, I mean we actually. I just finessed her into liking video games. She she's like, oh, I am anti video games. Like, I broke up with my last boyfriend because he played too much Fortnite. And I'm like, yo, Fortnite's cool. Like, what? 
<laughs> so you and talked so, her back into so it? So she's obsessed with Star Wars. So one day I bought the Lego oh, no. Star Wars game. Yeah. This girl's nice at it. Oh, no. <laughs> she won't stop playing it. What do you play it on? Like what game? Uh, PS4. PS4. Yeah. I played on Crush's PS4. Crush has a PS4? Yeah. Uh, yeah I got yeah. his gamer tag too. I don't want to shout it out though. Bro, I literally know nothing about video games. I never grew up playing video games, none of that. But you know, I stopped for a long time, but I, I used to have this stigma like, oh, video games are for children, or, like it's childish or immature. But then when I started going through a hell of a lot of shit when I was like older twenties, late twenties. I played a little. I started playing again, and I realized it was so healthy for me to just shut off my brain mm. and light some motherfuckers up. <laughs> that was healthy. <laughs> yeah, it was healthy. I mean, like I didn't have to think about the million and one things, you yeah. know, that come with, yeah. you know, being me. So like, <laughs> distressed you? It for sure did. I was able to like turn off, yeah, get away from some issues that I probably had no control over at mm-hmm. the moment. Yeah. Um, and I thought that was pretty healthy for me. Is your brain full of a lot of thoughts all the time? All the time. You might think I'm like looking at you and listening, but like throughout this whole interview, I've You're thought thinking? of over like 2,000 things I have to do after this. Are you serious? Literally. Oh, bro. You Including know I, the puff was one of them, so. I know. I saw. I kept seeing your crazy eyes. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, maybe he has to shit. No. <laughs> just I'll, I'll just do it right here. I'll commit to the podcast. <laughs> Oh man, I'm the captain of this ship now. Do you like to go fishing? Do you like to fish? Oh, that's so sad. I've never been fishing. Ne- Petros, yeah. Please promise me right now that you will allow me to take you fishing for the first time in your life. When are we going? Do you have fishing rods? Bro, I love to fish. You have rods? That's why I asked you. I have two rods, three rods. Sierra's great Four at rods. fishing. Sierra, you like to fish? Yes. That's hard. Did you grow up fishing? Yes. You did. Oh shit. Damn, like legit. Tunas. Okay, this tunas? okay. This is my podcast. This is my podcast. If you want to come back yeah. for a fishing podcast, there you go. We can schedule that. There you go. One hundred percent. That's crazy. That you've caught. Yeah, she wants like, to teach me so, big ass like, fish like that. Jeez, I would love to go. No, I call. Dibs. I'm a hike. I'm a hike guy. So like, <laughs> if we hike and there's waterfalls and whatnot, yeah, like, and wild all, fish. Yeah, I'm all about it. <laughs> and there's bears and bears. Yeah. <laughs> is there a over there where you grew up? Besides, like, the beachy town, was there, like, mountain town that you can go camping and stuff like that? Outdoorsy yeah, there's, vibes? there's stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, I love that, bro. I was supposed to go camping one trip, and then my brother told me I couldn't go last Why? night. <sighs> do we want to get into that? I do, 100%. <laughs> Pause. Now, it was just, I was really close with, I had three older brothers, and this one older brother I was very close with, he was, like, promised me this camping trip, there'd be waterfalls, fishing, and, yeah. like, all this stuff. And uh, last minute, there wasn't enough room in the tent for me or whatever. I what? Like, Why did your brothers do that to you? I don't know. Maybe it was the other side of the, the girl. He was he was about to he was uh, seeing was probably just she like, didn't like you. I don't know. She's trying dude. to shut you out. I shut don't you know. out of the picture. So therefore, I could have went fishing that time. Damn. No, bro. I'm gonna. Take I'm not holding on to it at all. I swear. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. I believe you. Yeah, I do. Right. I swear. I'm. I'm good. No, I'm all right. What about outdoorsy <laughs> other shit like hunting? You know what I mean. Never been hunting. Would you want to go hunting? L- I would love to. Yeah. 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 I, I mean, like, I don't know too. how I feel about like shooting a majestic animal. Hmm. What do you consider majestic? <sighs> like a moose. Or a deer, I love you so much, bro. <laughs> or like, like a, a moose. fox, a fox even a too bunny majestic. too. Like I don't want to shoot yeah. a bunny. I'll shoot a duck. Did you ever like grow up like like you didn't shoot a BB gun at like animals? Like kill the bird. I used to throw rocks at seagulls. That's about it. <laughs> well, it was a beach rock. town, dude. It was a beach town. <laughs> I don't slingshot know. nothing. Nah, no, no. Damn. We oh uh, we. we we used to do some crazy shit though to the uh, the snow plowers when it was snowing. Oh, I don't know nothing about that. <laughs> they I grew used up to in the come desert. up with their trucks, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, we would pack paintballs into snowballs. Oh my! And God. we'd go up on the neighbor's roof. We'd be on the roof, Hell and yeah. every time the tow truck drivers would come by, we would just light up their tow trucks with paintball Hell snowballs yeah. Yeah. and they'd park the whip and they like go oh. circle the house looking for people Look for the, the game. who's checking the roof dude nobody's checking smart the roof. brilliant idiots i feel like little boys kids they're not having this experience 
Nah, they were not, not at no, all. No, no little kids go out and play <sighs> when it's snowing Sucks. and like Sucks. go far away from home. It reminds me like what you're telling me was the same kind of like shenanigans that me and the homies would get into. It was just like we were probably more bored. Like we just had the desert, so we we'd have like a BB gun. It's like standard outfitted. Like everybody had a BB gun. You go in the desert. And then you just see like lizards or birds or whatever you see, and then just light them just up. Just light them up. Oh. What else do I want to talk to you about? <clears throat> Sex. <laughs> <laughs> Talking to you about sex <laughs> on the pod. Uh, dude, you remember that time? Yes. Where, um, yes, I do. I know you do. <laughs> You're going to remember this. Okay, we were at Moog. Wait. We were... <laughs> you did it, bro. <laughs> Let's, go. Go. Let's go. <laughs> we're going viral off that. <laughs> For sure. Off the fart. Off the Peter fart. <laughs> hey, ASMR yeah. farts. Wow. Bedrooms. <laughs> See, I'm so glad we got that. Um, no, there was this time we were at Moog, and you were buying mm. weed. <laughs> you were at the weed shop. Yeah. I want you to explain your story, but this is my interpretation of it. This is hilarious. You were at the weed shop, and then... You got in a fight at the weed shop. Oh, yeah. And then you came back to the studio and, like, told, <laughs> told everybody you just got in a fight. You were, like, all pumped, full of adrenaline. We were all just tripping out. I'm not but a, I'm not a fighter. I know. That's what the hilarious somehow, part. somehow, I've found myself in so many scenarios where it's like, fuck it. I guess we have to do this. How did it happen? Break it down for me. 9 a.m. in the morning. It was 9 in the morning? Yeah, 9 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> I had no weed and I needed to smoke that morning or whatever. Uh, you know, like you ran out of weed. Yeah. You want to wake up, start your day with a smoke and then uh, do yeah. some sessions. Uh, I go to the weed shop. And I'm like, there's nobody there. You know, it's first thing in the morning. And I'm mm-hmm. like pulling into this spot. And there's like construction wood there. So I backed up and pulled in the spot prior. As I'm backing up, this dude like sped up behind me. And like I still pulled into the spot. And I looked at my rear view mirror and he spit on my car. Oh, so like <laughs> I got out the car after obviously he did too I'm like did you just spit on my car he's like yeah what of it dude I was like why he's like you took my spot I was like your spot amongst the million of other spots that are here three right spots now? like what are you talking about <laughs> he's like you gonna do something about it or what I was like bro I'm fucking 30 years old you think I'm gonna fight you over a parking spot right now you're ridiculous <laughs> sure enough we're both going to the weed shop the whole way up the stairs. The talk, same walk? Same walk. We're talking <laughs> shit the whole time. <laughs> so we get inside the weed shop and like Hell yeah. Um I hand my ID, he hands his ID or whatever. I'm like talking to the ladies through the window. I was like, yo, yeah. does this guy come early every morning to spit shine all your customers' cars? <laughs> And he like got in my face and immediately I just reacted and just like hit him with the left Damn. from the counter. I was like about to receive my ID. Like he got in your face and you just. I thought he was about to hit me after I said yeah. that, that remark. Your you know, brain trying was trying like, to be funny. Oh, damn. And I, he like stepped to my shoulder and I just turned. Bink. Boom. Buried him in the chin. Like, left hook? Left. I'm not even a left. What did he look like? Dude, big Hawaiian dude. Oh, no. Big. Much bigger than me. Like, had like six inches on me. No. Yes. It's like a big poly and, bear? Yeah. And I Damn. fucking pushed him into the wall and then like somehow used my hip. Mm-hmm. I don't know where. This all comes in yeah, the moment. I'm not moment. some fucking cool Jet Li guy. I'm just thankful yeah. I didn't die. You just did that. And I ripped him to the ground over my hip and he fell to the ground. I had him and I literally spared him. I sat there, held him like this, and I waited for the security to come around. And the security, like, he's holding my, my Puma slides. The dude on the yeah, floor? Yeah, like, he was holding my leg. Clocked. He was just, like, holding my leg like this. And I'm just, like, holding his neck like this, holding back, not punching him. You are about to do ground and pound. I was about to do ground and pound, and I didn't. <laughs> and you did I spared him. I was like, dude. <laughs> and, um, Why'd you like, spare him? He was like, I have no idea, because, like... Like, the badass in me wanted to just, like, give him a black eye. But at that point, it was just, like, so fast. And yeah. I'm not a confrontational person. Like, I didn't yeah. even know I was going to do that. Right. That was not in my plans. You just... just... Thank God he didn't bury me. I know. And then at that yeah. point, he's, like, the security, like, gave handed me my sandal back. And he's like, dude, that was cool. But <laughs> he you, told you, you it was can't, cool. He's like, you can't shop here. I was like, What? <laughs> And that guy, the, the dude, the Hawaiian dude's like, meet me in the fucking parking lot, you bitch. I was like, like no. I was like, hell no, I'm taking this no, W, I my w. And I'm, going. I'm going to get high with the homies. <laughs> I was like, see you later. And I left. 
That's and a I big went to dope. a weed shop like down the street, got some weed, and oh, so you didn't even get your weed from the shop? I couldn't. No, they oh, wouldn't yeah, let they me in. You. Which was, but whatever. Ooh, I, yeah, I never went back. That's hard. But but Hell one yeah. of the people that worked there, yeah, uh, followed me on Instagram, <laughs> and she told she had told me that she saw the footage. And uh, she has it? No, she, oh, they, they didn't film it, but so she said bad. she saw the footage, and she was like, "That was nuts." <laughs> I was like, can you get it to me? She's like, nah. They never got it to you? Nah. That shop, I think, got raided and shut down. Oh, my gosh. That happens to a lot of these shops out here. It's the battle. It's the battle between getting a license or Mm. trapping. So it's literally, even still with how, like, legal everything is is there's like a a big problem with that? Is it The divide is just as bad as the vaccine divide. Like, what do you mean? Like how hard it is for people to just want to get the vaccine. People who stand on the non-vax and the vax side, it, that's how it is in the weed department where it's like, I don't want to get a license because oh. you're fucking me and I'm not going to pay all this money to the state. That makes sense. To just get screwed. Yeah, that makes sense. When their business is working and, yeah. and performing perfectly fine. And they're just taxing it because of the fact that it's recently legal and it there's still a perception around it like you know what yeah. i mean it's not like perceived as it became political good yeah it is political for sure and now when you go to those shops that are legal most of the weed that you see on the shelf is six to eight months old really is that yeah. bad uh, yeah damn you won't see anything that is three four weeks old damn. straight from harvest yeah you it's crazy i mean my girlfriend works at a weed shop do you do you see anything that's that fresh all the time no, it's trash. And a lot of the times Damn. you have to go through distribution. So it sits at distribution for two or three months and then it makes it to the shop. Damn, it's that So old. when you're smoking that weed, it's like old. Old. Yeah. And you're not getting fine weed anymore. You're getting weed that's grown to have more shelf life. Damn. So it takes away the art of like wanting to have those exotic like runs. Rapper or, weed? Yeah, the rapper As they weed. call it. Yeah, the, yeah. Rap, the AAA weed. You know what's crazy is like. Did you start smoking weed early? Like, no, how old were like you? 13. That's pretty early. Yeah. Did you say no? I was no, like 13. No, I, I mean, there's a lot of kids out there that started seven. Oh, for sure. Eight. Yeah, you're right. There's you know, that. it depends on the, the area you grow up in. Yeah, 100%. Or like, you know, yeah. who your cousins are. <laughs> I smoked with my That's cousin so at 13. Damn. You know? <laughs> Were and you, he was like, yeah, oh, we're going to smoke on this Friday. I was like, hell yeah. You were prepping. I was like, in probably eighth grade or something you're like let's get it dog and i get there and he's like he's like wait we gotta wait because i got like four girls from school coming i was like you're gonna have me get high for the first time in front of these girls and he was older too like he was in in ninth or tenth grade damn so these girls came over and he's like all right i'm gonna get high with them first and i'm gonna come get you and i'm gonna get high with you (laughs) and he pulls me in the bathroom after they're all high and we're fucking smoking out of a water bottle. <laughs> oh, the classic water bottle bomb. And I got so fucking high. Dude. Really? Your and first I, time? I was hilarious. I was being Hell so yeah. funny. And I knew that that shit was way better than Adderall. That's where Petros was born. Bro, they had there. me on Adderall since seventh grade. I was right. like, I went to a doctor. The teachers were like, ah, this kid's got ADD. Like but bugging, he's bro. a great student, but he's got ADD. And my parents... <sighs> told me that yeah you got to take this that's every so day. trash that they do that so that was my first high oh my gosh adderall is f- kind of fun yeah i mean not at 12 years old <laughs> i should not say i should not say that 12 years it's, old it's the first so time bad. i took adderall i stayed up three days <laughs> oh and didn't tell my parents that oh. i didn't go to bed because my dad was like if you know them bed pedros <sighs> it's over for you <laughs> your dad sounds like a yeah, he secret was spy fucking the grinch <laughs> have you ever had uh what's it called ritalin what the fuck dude yeah, bro needs that. Yeah, that's right. Yo, are you there? <laughs> All right, I told Cruz, so just knock on the front Riddling door. Riddling is crazy. It's okay, nuts. Bye. No problem, bro. Oh, you're running the sesh. Bro, you're a big boss. Tell him. Yo, you got a crispy line, too. You do. Okay. Okay, bro, I'm got literally on the mic the with pod. you right now, so I'm going to let me call you right back. Okay. All right, bye. Um, Sorry. Now you're good. What was I saying? I have a crispy ass. Oh, you mean my lines? My You don't have a crispy ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, oh my anyways, gosh. life's oh. crazy, dude. Life really happens for me. Yeah, it does happen for you. It's crazy. You're a wild man. You know what's funny is like when my back's bent against the wall. Pause. And I, you know, like where you're like, all right, I got to give up. You know, like every time I've tried to give up music... 
something happens and it just like kicks me for like another two or three years out here. Yeah. Even when I left. It seems like you just went through that. Yeah. You did. Right before the pandemic. It seemed like you, you had this point where like. I wanted to be a, wanted a, a car salesman or work at far, <laughs> State Farm or something. <laughs> I just wanted something consistent, dude. Music's been awesome, you know, like there's so many great <sighs> moments and then all of a sudden you hit these dives where it's like, you know, there's a lot of up and down. So if you don't have the willpower yeah. to fight through those lows, it's going to, LA will eat you up, chew will. you up, spit you out. It will. You're right. And like, you know, nobody gave me handouts. I don't have rich parents. You what know? would you say to somebody starting like right now that doesn't know anything about that? What? Come to LA? And well, we'll, just the whole grind process of. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't. Damn. That's Literally. maybe some what of the I, best what, advice. What I would I've heard say about what I would say is real. get a real job yeah. that you like doing and keep making dope music. Save some of that money and take some trips to wherever you think you could make better music with better people. Because <sighs> if you put yourself on the internet nowadays with the way Facebook marketing is and Instagram marketing is, like I found you before you walked into my studio. Really? Bro, I listened to Hoops a week mm. before you came in, and then I saw your video on Instagram before I ever followed you. That's crazy. And then you were in my studio a week bef after that. Damn. And so I met you on Instagram before I met you in person. Didn't know who you were. We mm. never talked until yeah. you were in my studio. If that's capable, like yeah. anyone can have a real job, mm -hmm. keep their sanity, mm -hmm. get free rent at your mom and dad's house right. for a long time. Yeah. So you don't have to. So you don't have to. Right. And figure it out because at 19 years old when I came out here, the rent was still expensive. That's a great, great and point, bro. Wow. It was just like I could have had a real job and saved up 50 to 100K and then mm -hmm. figured out how I wanted to divvy up some into investing so I made more. Right. Some into my passions like art, music, yeah. whatever. Uh, a lot of people have this like unrealistic view because of social media they're like i want to blow up i want to blow up I wanna blow. Yeah. and then they want it so fast we live in this world where everybody has instant gratification yep. oh i post a picture 100 likes ah, i feel hot right. that's instant gratification back in the day girls used to have to like eat healthy for five months <laughs> get good physical activity and then they'd feel good about themselves yeah so no, i still right. believe in that old-fashioned like plant a tree mm -hmm. water the seed grow. every day and you will reap the benefits of that three to four months from now. 100%. But, you know, with this instant gratification world we live in, these kids want to blow up tomorrow. They want to come out to L.A. and they expect everything that week. And you don't understand, bro. Your first time in L.A., you're going to get uh, ghosted. Your you're going to get ghosted yeah. by everybody that said they wanted to, to work with you. It does. And if you're not ready f for those first few ghosts, yep. you know, either way. Put money in your pockets that's a great great plan bro because like i'll no, end i'll end with this yeah i like that you uh you kind of look like russell brand oh gosh i get that a lot really that's that? been told to you before yeah well i just wanted to end with that you want me to put my hair down for that i actually do want to see it down and uh, i would really you appreciate see it the you want to see the petros brand yes i do I've only seen it in a Russell bun. Russell brand petros brand no. i actually met him a few times dude and he was a you great met dude. russell brand yeah who are he, you he had a he had a tv show and i was like working on the tv show sometimes i don't know who it's called brand x brand and x? they did not let him last more than one season because he <laughs> talked about stuff that tv didn't he's want too to controversial but well, now he's popping on youtube and that's fire <sighs> it's not censored it looks great oh great we have a great show today <laughs> We brought in a homeless guy from the streets of LA. We're gonna let him live in this mobile home. And he put a mobile home in the state, like in the whole studio. And the homeless man thought he was gonna spend the night there. No, dude. You look just they like gave him like man. 500 bucks and like, dude, you gotta go. Oh, you're crazy. Here, keep this hair. I don't want your hair. No, 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 no. Put it in the journal you keep of me. I don't have a journal. Here. I actually have mine. I do have a journal. But it's not a diary though. It's more manly. Scotch tape it to that page that you write about. Thank you for doing this, bro. Honestly. I appreciate it. Like I said before, I, I didn't want to have to ask you to do this. You wanted me to I make wanted you feel you special. To ask. Yes, and you did. <laughs> Today you was the day. Thank you for calling me last minute. Who who canceled on you? Yo, who canceled? Who Forrest canceled. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Thank you, Forrest, for yeah. letting me get a shot. <laughs> I'm, I'm an honest man. And so are you. And you're a great man. I don't mind. Yeah. That I'm second best. I love you, bro. My nips are chafing from 
this cord that's been you know, just going back and I've forth. been trying to be polite and not look at them. <laughs> but, but I can't help myself. <laughs> okay, I lost help. Hell yeah. Hell baby. yeah. Hell yeah. All right. That's Tell it. me you love me, brother. I love you, brother. Yeah, I love you too. Wait, reach over the mic? Yeah, reach over the mic. What Let's if go. I get my arm sweat on? It's all right. I'm going to have to clean that chair. Cavello, Petros, we out. Oh, this is camera's still running, they know? Is it? Oh, no. Let me see everything you got.